This is Hail Conversations with Matt Rappaport and apparently Vic Gundotra. Boom, shakalaka, laka, boom. Everybody, welcome to Hail Conversations. I am Rappaport, and that is the work of Rodney Pike. He'll be coming up shortly tonight, my guest. Very excited to have you join us on this Thursday, June the 7th, our 35th episode, I believe. And uh, we're uh, approaching the year anniversary of Google+. Plus. Our show's anniversary is in September, so that'll be exciting. And, uh, yeah, so I am Rappaport uh, versus the I'm not Rappaport. You know, the play, the movie, Jed Hirsch. Uh, Google it. So how's your June, June, June going? Excited to announce New York City Herald Part 2 uh, we're, is in the works. We're looking at August to make that happen, exactly six months after the first one. And uh, hopefully you guys can make it. If you can't, you can at least be in hangouts with us and, I hope to make other hang other hurls hangouts in real life. Uh, H dot uh, or H period dot I period dot R period L period. You'll find it. Just put H period. It'll pop right up. And uh, we're looking forward to that. So a lot of people working on that. Got Lori Friedrich and Daniel Enlo and Scott Biasine and hopefully Shepley Allison will find some great restaurants for a good price in New York City for us and possibly a photo walk in Central Park. We're looking forward to that. So keep your eye out on both my page and the H. Dot I dot R dot L dot page. Uh, last week's episode with guitarist Matty James and Katie Sevigny, surprise singer guest. That is up to check out, as well as our Plus Tame in show. That's me, Jane Allen, and Matt Mikowski. We have a whole fun time together where we uh, make fun of each other. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Uh, no, that's what we were doing some weird news and other stuff. Uh, not a lot of new stuff going on on Google, uh, but I'll tell you this a lot of awesome people are making the suggested user list on Google Plus. Uh, my friends Cliff Roth, Moritz Toldorf, and tonight's guest, as well as Larry Fournier, have just recently been added to it. So that's kind of cool to see Google putting the community pillars, if you will, uh, as Natalie Villalova said, the community pillars on uh, the Google Plus suggested user list and uh, more people seeing those that are active and seeing those that are that are kicking butt and enjoying their time here and contributing in a, in a, in a I'd say, daily way and interacting. So that is fun to see. Uh, if there's someone that you think should be on the SUL, send it, send feedback, send it, post a comment. You know, you never know. Maybe it's you, maybe it's me, maybe it's someone else. So there are a lot of great deserving people, and uh, I think it'll just make everything more act interactive. Uh, shout out to everybody that's already tuning in and watching. I see my coffee break, break friend has an opinion, is uh, watching over there on YouTube. We also have a lot of you checking us out on Google Plus itself. Lori and Friedrich Joe Chang. Don Carl, Don, Don Carl, I should say. I don't know you hate Don. And uh, I see Boris is saying, wee, which Rodney told me about, which is kind of fun. Uh, and Rodney's our guest tonight. Our, our guest is coming to us live from Louisiana. He's a humorous illustrator that I've hung out with, but I really got to know through his artwork and do what he does on the Google Plus stream, all of his caricatures, uh, celebrities, and Google people. As you can see, this is uh, Vic and Dotra, head of Google Plus over here. And uh, there's a little, there's actually someone behind him. Uh, he threw in, Rodney did a little Disney-esque uh, sneak in back there, which is kind of cool, where his arrow is. Uh, he's blowing, there you go. He's put in the window. Uh, he's like, he's, he, his face is glued. I think it's Mr. Bean. We're going to ask Rodney about that. And uh, he's a, he does political satire, and he does magazines, books, lots of clients, F a FHM Magazine, as I can't say that because I haven't had a subscription to FHM in a while or Maxim, but I should catch up. Tennis Magazine, Village Voice, uh, a lot of companies. He's a member of the ISCA, NAPP. He's a RodneyPike.com. He's the talented, newly suggested user list user, fun and interesting Rodney Pike. Welcome to Hangout Conversations, Mr. Pike. He's like, I got to unscreen share. Get his face on. Unscreen share. Coming up. Cover right up. Yeah, it's really cool how you got the big with the glasses and you got the little trinkets of hair popping down there and his teeth. I wonder if he likes his teeth like that. They're very, they're very shiny. There he is. Yeah, Johnny Pike. I don't know why it wasn't responding, but uh, here I am. Hope they're not too disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're they're not disappointed at all. Welcome to Hangout Conversations. Thanks for being on the show. So, so what? So talk about the big. Let's talk about the big Nocho picture we just saw. Yeah. What goes into something like that? What, uh, as far as the getting the hair right and, and the, the specific details? Well, Vic, Vic was kind of a unique one because he's not a, 
uh, grotesque looking person. You know, <laughs> it's easier <laughs> when they're like disgusting. He doesn't have an enormous schnoz or, or you know, he's got strong jaws, uh, a strong jawline. Uh, you know, he's got a nice smile and, and the glasses, of course, you know, trademark glasses. Uh, and he's got a little flare on those ears. Um, actually, what I do typically is I'll take one photograph that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to work from and find as many others within, in uh, other poses as I can as reference uh, to where you can kind of get a, an idea of three-dimensionally what they're what they look like and um, I take uh, the images usually into uh, liquify a lot of people think that I use liquify for all of my work I don't I, I use it to do what I call liquify sketches which is kind of can you just explain rough. just explain what liquifying is that process Okay, it's in, in Photoshop. Uh, Liquify is just a, a part of the software where you can bring in and, and you've got various tools that you can warp, stretch, shrink, swell, do all sorts of things. Uh, and, and literally, you can liquefy it. If you, if you drag your brush across it, it'll, it'll literally liquefy the image, make it look like liquid, uh, make it flow like liquid. <clears throat> but it's a good tool for for doing quick uh, exaggeration, uh, just kind of studies to see which direction I want to go, you know. And I found out real quick with, with Vic that it was going to be very subtle, you know. I mainly was going with the jawline uh, and, and the ears and, uh, you know, a bit of a forehead, but I, I didn't want to stretch things too much uh, mm -hmm. because he's a big guy around here, you know. And <laughs> so how do you, is it tricky when you're trying? Because I know everyone's all, if you haven't seen Ronnie Pike's work, check it out at RonniePike.com. But a lot of your characters, you know, the faces are really, they are big, they are stretched. How do you, like, sometimes you go sh up and sometimes you go this way? Or yeah. like, how do you decide? What, what's the determining factor with that? Is it just trial and error? Or? A lot of it is trial and error. Every, actually, you know, pretty much everything I do is trial and error. Everything, every piece that I do is an experiment. I'm learning from it all. You know, I'm still, I'm still new at this. Um, <clears throat> but you know, it, it's kind of hard to say where, because I, I, I don't have any training in Photoshop and in caricatures or in art for that matter. Um, so I don't know the rules to caricatures and, and exaggeration. There are some rules that apply. Um, I just kind of do whatever feels right, whatever looks right. And, uh, you know, prominent features, obviously, you exaggerate, and, and less prominent features, you diminish, you know, so. So you said you're just, you're learning. So how did you, I mean, was, what was your first, how did you get into art? How did you get, and what was your first, it's caricatures your first thing, or? Not, well, uh, as a child, as long as I can remember, uh, I've been an artist. Uh, I, as a child, I wanted to grow up to be norm like Norman Rockwell and huh. be an illustrator. In fact, I wanted to I, I wanted to pattern my life after him completely. I wanted to go to uh, uh, New York to the uh, Art Students League where he went to school. He got his art training. I had plans to do that, I, I, and, and I kept those plans up until I got. You know, I went through high school, I went to the military, got out of the military, I saved money, but I found out that it just wasn't feasible, it wasn't going to happen. And uh, being in Louisiana and being an artist is not a good combination. And uh, <laughs> so I, I laid it down for a long, long time. But to, to answer that question, that the way I got started, um, <clears throat> my earliest memories are Mad Magazine. You know, uh, we always had a Mad Magazine in the house, and I was one of five boys, so the boys' room, there was a Mad Magazine in every corner, you know, and uh, I had a brother that sketched, and I thought he was brilliant, you know, I thought his work was great, and I uh, just hoped that one day that I could be as good as him, so I started practicing with, uh, you know, drawing from Mad Magazine, and yeah. then... A lot of Alfred E. Newman. Yeah, yeah. And then when I found Norman Rockwell, I discovered Norman Rockwell's work. I just fell in love with it, you know, his storytelling ability and his work. And, 
but you know the fact that that he was an illustrator and uh, um, I had every Norman Rockwell book ever printed literally I had a library uh, of Rockwell books and uh, I I did I learned a lot by copying some of his work even even the paintings all paintings uh, some of them very intense and, and large you know, do you um, have any of your early work handy or not, or not really? No, not on. I don't have anything online. I've got some things uh, hanging in some rooms. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. There's, you know, like, uh, well, I don't know. Unless you know Rockwell, you wouldn't know these. There's one that was a Life on Life magazine. It's called mm -hmm. On Top of the World. <clears throat> and it's didn't he have the? Was he the one that did the farmer and the wife? Is that him? Y'all know. No. <laughs> no. No, that wasn't Rockwell. Uh, All right, my bad. Man. I've heard of Rockwell for sure. I've I'm seen so, it. So. You know, uh, well, I'll tell you about this in a minute. But, but, so uh, he's Rockwell and Mad Magazine are two big inspirations then, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mad Magazine was my, was my introduction to art, to drawing, and, and I fell in love with art. And Rockwell made me fall in love with illustration. And um, and painting, and I, I painted, you know, uh, is from is old. I don't know how old I was. I guess ten years old or so. I started painting, and by junior high school, I was showing and I was selling a little bit of work. But I was I'm not cut out to be a fine artist, you know. And a lot of people, you know, have different definitions of what fine art is. Uh, and, and, you know, back in Rockwell's time, it was not considered art at all, hmm. illustration. Well, I believe that Rockwell was a genius, and, and his work is fine art. And, and, uh, uh, but uh, No, you're right. He definitely was a genius, and I think that uh, those are two interesting inspirations. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people still, Mad Magazine was big for a lot of us, and also this Cracked right. that came out and some other different copy magazines, and I read it as a kid, and, and then they did the TV show. I mean, is it so, I mean, a lot of your work has humor. Humor is a big part of your work. I mean, you, do you feel like when you're, when you're doing it or when you're done with it, you feel like, oh, if this doesn't make me giggle or smile or laugh, then I'm not doing it right, or, or that's not applicable for everything that you do? Not really, um, because, you know, typically when I sit down, I kind of do things backwards. Uh, from what most artists do. Uh, if, if I try to plan something out, if, if I come up with a concept and a plan and see a picture in my mind and try to do it, I screw it up inevitably. You know? Um, but so, so I go into my work with no idea of what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, with Vic. I, I just took a picture of Vic, a, a face. Uh, it was you know good detail, and uh, I started working with it, and I just I do whatever feels right and whatever whatever comes to me, and it just develops into whatever it develops into. You know, I've got some very complex situational photo manipulations, including characters that that are uh, that you know took up to a week of intense uh, work, and and some of them hundreds of references. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I had no idea what I was doing when I first started. I started with, with a head, with a face, and just let it lead me, you know. And it's, yeah, I know it, it sounds strange, but it works for me, you know. Did you ever do them by hand at all? Just yeah. Just that way, yeah? Yeah, I, uh, you, know, you know, I started, like I said, I started as a kid doing characters with Mad, and I used to draw uh, characters on the beach for $3 a piece back in oh. the 70s. Uh, and I was in Louisiana? Yeah, yeah. And I uh, made a fortune off of that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. So what did you, so besides art, what was, what was some of the other careers that, or stuff that you, that you did get into? Is there anything that you, well, that you became an expert yeah. on or that you enjoyed? You know, I tried for two years to, to make it as an artist after high school, and it wasn't happening, and I had to do something. So I, I joined the military because the, the economy was just horrible. There were no jobs of any kind. Uh, this was in 1982. And uh, so I joined the Navy and, and I was in four years, did my time, and uh, 
was was glad I served, but glad to get out too. And uh, when I got out, I totally by accident stumbled into the car business uh, mm -hmm. in the service department and uh, rapidly moved up and into management. And I did real well there and, and made good money for uh, about 12 or 13 years. I did that. And um, so you manage? You never actually sold the cars yourself, or no? I managed the service department. I had, you know, I had technicians and service advisors and you know warranty clerks and secretaries and all like that that were under me. Uh, you know, so it was, a, it was a crush job, but you know, it it never. Not what you wanted to do. It never uh, fulfilled me. I was I, I was never fulfilled until I found. You know what was my true initially was was my lifelong passion, and that was to be an illustrator. You know, and, and uh, when that started happening is when I started feeling for the first time in my life some fulfillment in the work I did. You know. So what? So what would you say? How long would you say you've been doing uh, full time after the? Did you do? Did you start kind of after the car management was over, or you were doing it? Did you pick it up? While you were, while you have that job, no, uh, not a lot of people know this. Uh, I have posted it on Google Plus, and I'm I'm in the process of making a video for YouTube right now. But I went through uh, a 20 year span of horrible uh, depression and anxiety, and it just about ruined me. Uh, and nothing worked. You know, I started with the VA, uh, and then they just about killed me. <laughs> so I switched doctors. Uh, nothing ever worked. Nothing, nothing they did work. I, I, I lived in bed. You know, uh, I had nothing to live for. And um, in October of 2010, I think it was the 14th, uh, I found by accident I was surfing the web, and I found a, a, a funny image. Of it. And it just caught my attention, and I clicked on it and followed the link, and it led me to uh, freakingnews.com, which is a current news Photoshop uh, contest website, and, uh, and they have very small uh, prize, you know, prize money. It's, I think five dollars for first place, three dollars for second place. <laughs> But I did my first photo manipulation uh, on that day and submitted it to a contest. And I think I came close to placing it. It was a, it was like a painting. I took a, a famous painting. I put Obama's face in it. You know, something. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, 20 minutes it took me. You know, and uh, but it was fun. You know, and so. I, the next day, I did another one for another contest. I did another one and another one, and then 400 more. You know, <laughs> uh, I really got into it. I found that photo manipulation, Photoshop, was my home. That's that was where I needed to be. I knew that. Um, at that point, I had no idea that it it would be anything other than having fun. Um, and about Two or three, I guess, about two months into being there, um, I saw, I ran into, or kind of discovered Sebastian Kruger's work, who is a a, a living master. Uh, he's a brilliant artist, and he did uh, a lot of caricature work with the Rolling Stones. And that body of work cool. that he did with the Stones will go down in history as as a great work of art, a great body of art. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. You can still draw it, yeah. But I, still but I fell in love with it, man. I was like, God, I gotta try this, something like this. But I said, but I, but I'm a photo, I do photo manipulation. I had got out of the oil painting and all that. So I said, well, why not try it with a photo? And so and nobody was doing photo manipulated characters back then. You got a lot of people doing them now, but <clears throat> um, so I did Napoleon Dynamite. My first caricature I ever did, and uh, God. So, 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 
Yeah, I had, mm. the, I had the tater tots and, and all. <laughs> uh, yeah, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it 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 was it made a big hit. It was real popular uh, at the time. Now it looks horrible, to mm. me, but at the time, I'm sure it does. And, and at the time, I, it was it was a liquefied character. Nothing but liquefy. Yeah, I just went in there and stretched him, and that was it. Um, mm. I, my methods have changed drastically since then. I've gotten a lot more complex. But it, I, I enjoyed that so much, and, and about that same time, I found Jason Siler and Dominic Filbert, you know, and Russ Cook, and some of these, these great uh, character artists uh, that we have. Uh, most of them are on Facebook, you know. Uh, mm. you can't, for some reason, they won't come over here. Uh, on <laughs> they, uh, they don't get it yet. They don't get yeah, the power of showing your work live versus just, you know, I think they go the story behind it. Day, but uh, they found when they see this video, I don't, I don't yeah. need the competition. So. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. Yeah, there's a lot of great artists already on here. You're like, I, I mean, these, I mean, you do the caricatures. I know, is it? Tim Tim Jones is that is it you did his picture or I did Tim has up there yeah. his profile yeah yeah uh, Tim did a lot the, yeah the, the one that uh, I met or, or he introduced himself to me and and started bugging me to death after the uh, uh, initial character uh, that he commissioned me for he he started bugging me about doing hangouts <clears throat> that's I don't know man I. Hangouts are not my thing. <clears throat> and uh, he kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. And I finally joined the Hangout one night, and just, it was it was good, you know. It was magical. Great time. I, they, somebody just said, you know, if you want to meet Rodney, come by. And there were like 130 people that came through. And, <clears throat> and uh, they were filtered. You know, it wasn't public. Uh, so it was, it, it was some good people. And... And it was, I had a ball, so I've been hanging out ever since. I discovered you myself through the stream. Like, I, I, I had seen your work. I had seen, you know, this, these characters pop up in my stream, and I was like, no, this is really interesting. Who is this? This is, this is who is this guy? And then I circled you, and, and that's all, yeah. So, I mean, and then I hung out with you, I think, a few times, but I don't even know if I did. Did I hang out with you before New York City Hurl? Maybe once or twice no, or a few in times? In fact, you know, I mean, New York City Hurl... All I knew was your name. I knew your yeah. name well because it was all over the place. You and you and uh, what's your name? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. Bobby Joe. Yeah. Get mad at me too. <laughs> uh, who cares? That's fine. So, uh, uh, I don't get mad at. You. I'll never get mad at you. So no, but look. So, but so I, no, I, do, I had heard I had heard your name. I knew your name well, and then I got there and I was like, oh, okay, well, there's. Matthew Rappaport. Then I, I recognized your face. I'd seen you before, but I just hadn't put them together, you know. But yeah. yeah, I don't think we had actually met. I think that's the first time we met was in was face to face. I remember, yeah, because I I you I probably looked like I had my head cut off, or maybe not. I was like, you know, you're, the you're HQ. Kind of dark around a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I got to sit down. You had your beer, and we were talking. And like when there were less people there, it was easier. And then when more people were there, it was kind of crazy. And yeah, you did an outstanding job. With that uh, headquarters, man, it was uh, it was good. Oh God, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully we can do something cool uh, coming up. There've been a lot of different hurdles. Um, yeah, amazing yeah, experience, really. man. It's something I'll never ever forget. Yeah, I think in New Orleans, uh, New Orleans or Louisiana hurl, that would be a lot of fun if we could get yeah, that going. Yeah, we could we could get crazy in New Orleans. They allow yeah. it. <laughs> they allow. <laughs> that's what I heard. They allow you. Yeah. On the streets, are there? So, how far away do you live from New Orleans? Are you um, been there a lot? I'm sure. About 45 minutes. Uh, pretty close. 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, so, did you have a favorite moment at New York in New York City? Getting back to that, did you the concert, meeting everybody? And you kind of oh, have no, everyone wait. has their regular hangouts. Well, you know, right? my okay. favorite moment was 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 mixed emotions because it was it was saying goodbye. To everybody in the restaurant, remember the day before, yeah. uh, and 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 I was having to leave a little earlier than I wanted to, and and I was having to say goodbye. To, but it was I had met so many people that night, it was unreal, you know. And 
Uh, so that that was that was a, a, a really fond memory is that night at the restaurant. Um, you know what what really sticks in my mind though. Uh, when I when I got there is my surprise that when I walked up to Frank and Shafali and, and uh, you know Bruce and, and uh, Robert Rell and all those guys, uh, yeah, I wasn't surprised. My surprise is that I wasn't surprised. I knew them. I knew them yeah. well. I knew them intimately from these hangout conversations. And and that surprised me. I thought that it would be, you know, it'd be kind of weird. awkward or weird maybe. It wasn't, you know. Boris came up, running across the room, gave me a big hug, you know, first time. Ah, he probably. Wee. He's a little guy. Yeah, he did. Wee. Boris out there, great photographer to circle him. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's just so many, the whole, that, like, there's all these different connections, and there's these groups of people. So everyone did public for a while, and then they got there comfortable with who they kind of became friends with, and I jumped around here and there. But yeah, I mean, I mean, you had the Bruce Gobber, and Ra and, and you were with Frank Rufi and and Shafali and Robert Reddle and Brooke Brown, who was not there, unfortunately. I mean, Adley, Gallus, and Alistair, uh, Elaine, yeah, Boris, uh, Lindsay, yeah, uh, Boris, Elaine yeah. Lindsay, a lot of people, lot and of then. And also, and Jason Joseph, who, who's funny, he was not at New York City Earl, but a week later, we, I met him. Uh, we had that? like a mini girl. What? Who was that, you said? Jace, Jason Joseph. Oh, Jason Joseph, yeah. yeah. Yeah, only a week later, we had met him with Nita, who needed to lie. You know, we, we met in New York, but just kind of in passing, you know, and, and, uh, but we've become pretty close friends since, since then, that we got to know each other well. You know, from hangouts and and what what each other enjoy. He's a one thing about him. He's a passionate artist. You know, mm -hmm. he's a photographer, and, and, and uh, you know that's art. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't consider that art. That's it's definitely yeah. an art. I mean, I'm a filmmaker, so I have a lot Absolutely. of people trying. Yeah, to you're in my art circle. I gotta share that art circle real soon. Now I'll have a few more people share. You know, and this and this might not. I mean, I think even hangouts on air can be considered an art in a sense. It depends on what you do with it. I mean. They, I try to make it creative. I, I have a lot of ideas to do more creative stuff with it. You know, there's the you know video art form. Sure. Yeah, know. videography is is art. I mean, you know, cinematography and 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 uh, all of it. These yeah. show the show together. There's there's an art to it, definitely. Uh, being a broadcaster, uh, I think, is an art form. Uh, doing what you do, you know, uh, I think there's there's an art to it. And uh, McDermott and uh, his show and uh, he sounds yeah, like a, a lot of people. Yeah, I hear he's got that voice, you know. Yes, he does. I'm Peter McDermott, and this is news <laughs> to me. All right. Matthew yeah. Rappaport is here, and so on. Uh, yeah, so I, I got to tell him I'm going to do his show soon, too. They asked me a while back, and I, I, I didn't do it. Sorry. <laughs> No problem. Uh, so let's do. We we have a surprise guest that might maybe be here very shortly. But before we do that, I do a G four rapid fire this or that. No wrong answers. Uh, it's like Coke or Pepsi. So would do you prefer doing celebrity artwork or caricatures or like people you know caricatures like on Plus? Do you have a preference? Uh, better. I, I prefer celebrities, and I'm not sure if I prefer it more because <laughs> it gets me no, more notoriety or or if I really just enjoy them more. I guess, I, I guess I do enjoy them more because you know the, the, these movie characters and all that, that have this this personality that hopefully through a caricature that other people can relate to. You know, you can bring out that uh, that personality in, in a stronger way than, than even the, the original photograph may have portrayed. You know, that's my ultimate goal. Anyhow, is to you know. With the exaggeration, still maintain some semblance of reality, and 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 definitely capture or try my best to capture that personality. You know, what makes them them? And I think you do a really good uh, good job of that. Uh, this is just a fun one because of the hurl: beer or pizza? Beer or pizza? <laughs> yeah, beer. he's like, do I have to choose between beer or pizza? Beer and pizza. Of course. All right, together. That's the answer. That's that's correct. 
Uh, oh, film or photography? I guess they're kind of the same thing. But could you? I mean, do you have a preference oh, yeah. over one? Or? They mean like film. They're meaning cin- cinema film. Yeah, like a movie versus uh, like a piece of like a movie versus a, piece, a, photo- a photograph. I guess. You know, I'm I'm an art lover. I love all forms of art. When I watch movies, I see the cinematography. I see the art and the composition and all. That, that uh, you know, I know when it, there's a good director or producer, whatever you call it, whoever's in charge of making, you know, setting it up and all. Uh, um, so I, I think I think they're equal. Uh, I love photography. Uh, I know lots of photographers and a lot of, of professional photographers, brilliant photographers, uh, you know, and uh, I appreciate it all. But then, you know, I, I'm a lover, like I said, of the arts, and then that goes from dance, to theater, yeah, theater, music, performance, uh, fine arts, yeah. yeah. There's so much arts. All right, so both is good. And this is because uh, you're in New Orleans, Mardi Gras or Jazz Fest. Have you been to both? Uh, I've only been to Mardi Gras. I've not been to the Jazz Fest actually. Okay. Uh, Mardi Gras, that was an experience. Uh, you just went the one time. I think I've been there two. I, I've been a couple of times, but I've only been on Bourbon Street on Mardi Gras night at midnight. And I just about got crushed. Um, I made my, I managed to make my way out of the crowd. I was literally, I was up against a brick wall, uh, a building, brick building, and I was getting crushed. I had no wind. I was, I couldn't wow. breathe. And uh, I fought my way for about 45 minutes to an alley and got out of there quick. Yeah. And uh, claustrophobic. I'm not, yeah. I've not been back since, but. You know, if you do Mardi Gras, it can be real fun. Don't bother trying to get on Bourbon Street. You know, not on the, not during the busy time. So. Well, I did it. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I think it's like if you prepare yourself mentally, you're like, you know, that it's going to be hard to get to the bathroom. It's going to be hard to move oh. around. People are going to be flashing you, and there'll be beads. Well, actually, and people trying to make out with you and things yeah. like that. I had a, I had real close. Uh, Connections when I went, uh, it was a, a friend that had an office building with a drive-in uh, parking, you know, and restaurants and stuff. So, uh, so we had all that covered. But I think I was just in a bad place, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not all it's not all bad like that. It does get a little crazy though. But that's what Mardi Gras is getting crazy. It's true. Hey, we have a surprise drop in Moritz Holdorf this year. He's also he created the lower hangout lower thirds, and he's thinking, Matthew, why aren't you using my app on your show? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> exactly. You know, why are you not using it? Uh, I have it somewhere. I've used it before, but <clears throat> I just I kind of wish that you know what I kind of wish that they they would enable settings so you could kind of have it easier to turn on and turn it off. I feel like hangout apps in general uh, are not fully frictionless yet, but that's another issue we can get into. Uh, well, maybe the moment, maybe they're working on it. Well, I'm sure they're working on it. Everything takes time, I guess. I get. Uh, so this is I, Rodney and Moritz. You guys haven't even. Actually, I don't think Rodney City has never met no, you. No, no. You know, I said that. I'm sorry, Moritz. I, I apologize for that because I have met you, and it was and you were you were talking about uh, hangouts. In fact, you may it may have been a time when y'all were doing some work on it. Uh, yeah, some, probably with some coders. Uh, I was with Jason Joseph, and, and uh, he brought me into this hangout with a bunch of coders, and I think that's where I met you that day. Yeah, I think I remember that day. I, I think I saw you before in the hangout. Yeah. And so it's okay that you're on an on-air, Moritz, even though you're in the country that you're... That yes, it's, 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 it's totally okay. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Germany will not come down on you. Okay, that's good. No, no, no. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Rodney and does art, and Moritz, you're into the tech... You do. You've created some hang, a lot of hangout apps, and you're both big members of the community. And so, you know, for a long time, the the whole ghost town argument has been up there, and everyone's been going back and forth and attacking people to say it's a ghost town and graveyard or attacking. And then the other people say, "Hey, wait a second! I, I wasn't trying to be mean." And this whole thing that's been going on, and it's just usually this and what's hot has been a debated topic, and a lot of people debate about how many what your follower count is and if it matters and you know, I know Rob Michael made a funny thing saying, what are you going to do with all these followers? You're collecting all these followers. So now uh, Google has finally put people that, that we consider, I consider both of you community members versus, you know, being Ashton Kutcher 
or someone or being a Googler, uh, they finally put you today both on the suggested user list, which is for you, for those of you that don't know, it, it's the first one of the first things you see as a new user on Google Plus when you sign up, and just like like on Twitter, gives you different categories, fun and interesting, and art, and and, and tech, and all these different categories. So both of you, I think, are in the fun and interesting category, even though one of you is more tech and one of you is more art. There is the <laughs> more into showing us screen sharing with us. And so there's the fun and interesting scroll across the top. Now, a lot of people will click that shiny button that says follow all because it's a lot easier. There's Cliff Roth. There's also a, a great, there's Rodney. And uh, look how your conversations. Hey, we made the, we made the suggested user list. And there is this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's interesting to see how it all works. So now that this has happened, you know, you've seen, you've all had, both of you had, had pretty, I guess, what was considered impressive followings, but now with this, it's like people are adding you, look at clicking those red buttons with new accounts, and so you're seeing more and more people added a day before you might see somewhere between 20 to 100 or 200, and that would be a good day. Now you're seeing in the thousands, maybe somewhere between two and 5,000, 6,000 a day. So I would think before, let's see, it would take you two weeks or three weeks to get what you're getting in a day. So what what is that experience like? Is it is it too early to tell? I mean, you want to, I'll start with with Rodney, if you want to talk a little bit about yeah, what it's been like it, for you. It was a it was a shock to me at first. First of all, when I saw this morning that um, I noticed actually I noticed first that I had been uh, verified, and then I looked down. And I said, "Cool, I got verified," you know. And then I looked down, and my my numbers had jumped about uh, four thousand, three or four thousand uh, uh, followers, and I went, "What?" I know that you know it's it's nice to be. Uh, You're like, oh my God, verified WTF? Yeah, How could that get nice me to be verified so many followers? I mean, a bunch of followers. So I set out to figure out what was going on, and, and then I found, you know, that post. Uh, you know, somebody posted about uh, with a screenshot of Cliff Roth, and there was me sitting beside him. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was it was a total shock. And you know it's 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 hard to say, uh, you know about you know my reaction because I've yet to let me see now. You get uh, to yeah, it's interesting see that all happens. I've yet to get the. Uh, I'm looking right now just to see now. I've, I've still to the, at this point I've not gotten uh, any notifications that said six thousand people. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's interesting, right? So they, they send you a, a notification in groups. So you get the 10, and it'll save you more. But how all that works, and they're always messing with, there's the circle counts. You can see how he'll show you how you went from, yeah, you were at eight people. Uh, June 4th, eight people added you, see? Yeah. And yeah. June 7th, 5,300 people added you. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty powerful what this list, as far as a chunk of people now, those 5,300 people that added you, do they, the, how many of them know that they added you personally is, is another question, but it's still uh, None support. that I personally know of. Yeah. None but that have told me so. <laughs> and so I think that that's the interesting thing that comes up. It's like 5,300 people have added you, but those eight people that added you, they know eight people or 20 people, they're like, I know I added, or unless it was a shared circle, and then maybe they didn't yeah. know I added you yeah. either. Well, so it's, it's, much more, it's definitely much more meaningful when somebody circles you and, and you, you, you know, if you circle back or, or start interacting with them and get to know them, I mean, yeah. you know, that's what it's all about here. And, and that's certainly much more meaningful than, than uh, line list follows where somebody just clicks follow all and, and they don't really know who they're following. They're just following who was suggested, you know. Yeah. All right, Moritz, what about you? You've been, you've now, you actually got a little heads up. Did he freeze? Wait. Yeah, no, no, I'm here. Okay, there Am I free? Am I frozen for you? You're unfrozen. Germany has... Okay. With my, with my hammer. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, well, I, I got a, a short notice head up um, that I, I'm, I'm going to be added to the suggested, suggested user list, and um, I think one or two days later I was added, and I also not, you know, as Rodney said, I, I notified it or I realized that I was verified, and then I checked the suggested user list, and I was like, hmm, I'm, I'm not seeing myself on there. Mm -hmm. But I saw, like, you know, Rodney and Cliff, so I was sure that it, there was an update to the, to the um, list at all. And um, I was chatting with Cliff about the suggested user list, and then we figured out that um, you're not able to see yourself on the list, which is a bit <laughs> confusing. But I think 
Google just hides yourself from the list. They don't want you to circle yourself, although right. we, probably, we already right. have. I think we already have them. Yeah. I think I, we all circled ourselves, That's right? That's probably the first right. thing you did. Make right? sure you got to that first ten circles, you know? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean it's pretty cool. But it's um, I think too early to really see um, a difference or an impact mm. in like you know if you get spam messages or or if you get like more response on your posts or whatnot. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what's interesting, right? It's interesting to say like you know if you had fifty thousand people that have followed you from the beginning or twenty or thirty, and then you have this gets to the list and you're thirty, twenty, forty, fifty goes up to a hundred, a million. You know, along the way, how do your posts get more interactive with? Is it is it making a difference? And I, and I think that that's really you have like five million people following you, and your posts still are not being interacted with. You know, there's something strange about that, I guess. Right. And it depends on yeah. on what's going on. And I also I don't know. You know, you have the verification and all that, and, and I don't know like, you know, this is Google Plus. Every you could post whatever you want. Obviously, people aren't going to post. You're not sending people post porn. You guys aren't necessarily going to post porn, but if you want to post like something racy or or a curse word or whatever, I mean, you might. I don't know if now that you're on this list, you might be scared to post something that's edgy, or maybe I don't know if you two have, you know, with your art. I know Paul Rustan, who's a body painter, might be. I don't know. I mean, what do you think about that? Do you feel like that there's any <clears throat> pressure, Rodney? Uh, um, I, yeah. Well, um, my my way of posting changed a while ago. Um. um I mean, you all remember, you know, back in the day, the whole Boober Day right. story and stuff. So I, 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 you know, backed off from all this and then stopped being so silly, posting just random, funny stuff. I'm I'm posting more like informational, te technical, technical stuff. Sometimes some funny stuff every now and then, but but yeah. not that silly anymore. Um, but but this. You know, already changed a while ago. Um, since I got more active and involved in the community and, and started developing apps and working together with the um, with the community managers and stuff. And I think I, I don't. I'm, I'm not going to change the way I'm posting at all. Even now, being on the suggested user suggest list, different difficult work. Damn it. The soul. Your soul. It almost sounds like soul. Right. Your soul. So I, I think I will, you know, keep posting what I'm posting, um, and I think I'm I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm, I mean, I'm still thinking the way that you know, if people don't like what I post, they should, can just uncircle me, mm -hmm. right? And even now, when people just blindly circle you via the um, SUL, they might figure out after a while that probably you post stuff or you get stuff in your stream you you don't want to see or you don't like, and then you just start uncircling people after a while. Yeah. But the overall progression will, you know, still increase a lot. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the, it, the odds are there that the more people you have, the more people are likely to be interested in what you have to offer, you know, so. Yeah. But but uh, I, I, I think there are, the numbers are will be not as, as enormous as what some people might would think, you know. Right. Well, it all depends. Like, if they keep you on it or they rotate you, yeah. and that's what that was interesting too. Thing too is that where someone like Adari Musk and Amanda Blaine have, were put on it in December, and they've been on it ever since. You know, then someone like Anne Monica was put on it for about a month, and then she was taken off, and then like you know, Tara Naomi was on it and taken off, and different people that were members of the community that have been on it, you know, in different periods of time. I we really don't know what the rhyme and reason to any of it is, you know, and like if it's just about if it's just about boosting some people, so. They're like, oh, this person's doing a hangout show. Let's get this person a couple of followers. So now they, so all this work and stuff, they're getting more attention. Or this person has hangout apps. Let's see, his hangout apps get used more. Or, or let's see more people check out your art, right? And I think maybe that might be their the idea that they're going for. I don't know. Do you think that there's any truth to that, or do you think it's just, oh, this person's cool, so let's put them on? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, they they really pick people. Um, for what they've done to the community, or if they're really, you know, in Google's opinion, like interesting. Right. I mean, Rodney and Cliff, they, they they did a lot with their their art and their paintings and stuff. Yeah. So they did an impressive job within the community. Like you know, Cliff painted like hundreds of people already in Hangouts, and then Rodney does all the the, the awesome like morphing arts with celebrities yeah, and also yeah. stuff from 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 some people on Google Plus. 
And um, right. So with that line of thinking, I would think people like Byron Rimpel and Paul Rustan yeah. and, and uh, Tim Clary and, and Aaron Wood. And there's like a, there's there's a ton of people that have that have drawn like this Byron Rimpel with the zombies. I mean, there's he's done so many zombies. Right. So we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think Google will now add more and more people really directly from the community. Mm -hmm. um, I think I mean it, it just took a while to you know d develop all these communities, right? At the beginning, they just put on celebrities which are already well known, um, right. even outside of Google Plus. And now they they I think they keep you know putting people on the list which are got kind of famous or or known on Google Plus for what they do within the community or for the community. Yeah, they just had I, I think another thing that's important though is that Google Plus is listening to what other people have to say. You know, because right. everybody voiced their opinions <laughs> loudly about the suggested user list, you know, for the for the past uh, few months here. And and they made a change. They listened to them. Right. I mean, you saw a lot of like sh shared circles with, you know, from other people with, with like their suggested user list, um, with people they um, suggest to follow for new users. And now you see some of these users being really on the official um, user list, and and this is also, I think, something is, you know, Google was recognizing that there are more like interesting people from within the community that should be, you know. Get some more ignore it, uh, acknowledgement attention. on the, on the attention, yeah. yeah, or attention on the on the suggested user list. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree with what you guys are saying, and it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens and how it how it changes along the way. But you guys, I mean, I think we're I think there's a lot. I mean, just if I just look at the New York City Hurl, just the just the people at the New York City Hurl alone probably could be all of them be on the list. There's just so many great people, uh, and even South by Southwest, and and uh, I mean. And you know, and you don't have to actually travel and hurl to be suggested. There's a lot of great people that that can't, and you know, someone like Byron all the way up in Canada, or you know, there's a lot of different musicians uh, that are, and you know, and like what who gets recognized, who doesn't is, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, and I think we will see more people. But congratulations if that's, if that, I mean, hopefully it'll work out. You guys will your experience now. Your experiences might change. You might get inundated with so many emails and notifications and. And you might miss stuff that's important. Do you think that? Have you thought about that? Is that something that that might change your whole Google Plus experience or make it less than it? Than yeah, it, it, it might change probably. Um, I, I mean, I talked to Amanda um, a bit about that because she was, you know, one of the right, first Amanda regular Amanda. users um, who got on the suggested user list back in the day. Um, and well, I, I think you might miss some posts. When you get a lot of of, of notifications, um, yeah. but sorry. actually, when you enable like you know email notifications, you can set up some some filters to filter out the important messages you really want to get, and get rid of all the you know overhead notifications. You know, there's there's one thing that I noted noticed right off the bat that I won't be able to do now. That I did up until this point, um, and you know, up until this morning, I was at like 44,000, you know, uh, circles, and all 44,000 of those I looked at individually when they came in. Every single, wow. every time I was circled, I, I went, and if it took me two or three hours to scroll through them all, then then I, I spent the time and I, I looked at everybody. Um, I didn't go personally check every single profile out, but I, I looked to see, you know, if, if there's anybody that stood out or anything. And, and you know, I, we won't be able to do that. You know, it's just, just not going to have uh, the time and the day to handle that many. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like I was saying before, someone like Vic, who must have the most uh, email yeah. notifications ever. It would take if he went through. And Chris Perlow has even said he said if he went through all the notifications, it would take me forever. Like they. You look for stuff that maybe mentions or all that, but even like when you put up, when some of these people put up a, a post, the amount of comments, you know, like 500 and then all the plus ones and all the shares, and it's just, it's really hard to interact with uh, with people like that. I mean, at least, you know, at least not everybody, and I think at this stage it's hard to interact with everybody, but you have a better chance uh, at this right. point. So, yeah, so, hey, really, you know, that's, that's, 
dependent, like Mark, uh, Mark said, you know, on your the way you have your own uh, circles customized and, and you know filtered and all. Uh, you know, I, I think it's it's probably be a good thing to educate the newcomers about that. You know, uh, you know, uh, optimizing those circles to where uh, there's whatever stream they decide to look at at any given time, it's going to have the kind of material they're looking for, the people they're looking for, you know? All right. <clears throat> so uh, I was going to we look more at your art, Rodney, but I think I want to see the post-show. I don't know if Lawrence can join us for that. That'd be great. And I'm going to have a lot more people in there so we can all look at your art together and, and, and all talk about it like a bunch of different people. Uh, I think that'd be good. But I'd like to end the show with the with the night, with the the wrap-up, the G Plus wrap-up, and uh, it's pretty much... Just talking about you know just just a couple of questions about G plus so I'll ask you both what is your favorite part of Google plus a lot of people say hangouts we'll start with Rodney um, hangouts are, are, are definitely uh, I enjoy them I enjoy spending quality time and getting to really really notice people intimately uh, online um, but but I you know any any kind of Personal interaction, you know, and that's what makes it special. You know, uh, whether it's whether it's going out and commenting, you know, uh, complimenting somebody on something, or you know, when you receive that, it it, it means something. You know, it uh, feels good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to do as much as I can. You know, uh, I'm a very busy man, but I, I try to squeeze as much of that in as I can. But uh, yeah, Any, just personal interaction, man. It's uh, it's amazing how much. More interaction there is here on Google Plus than anywhere else. Oh, yeah. Any any social media network on the web, uh, it's incredible. You know, so. I will say in, in regards to what you said, it's funny how a plus mention could make somebody's day, and also when you plus mention people, they can go, "What? Why are you doing this?" So it's like interesting the different dynamics of like people. There are people that get mad about it. There are people that get happy about it. And then there are those people that I said this before. They pretend like they're mad about it, but they're actually secretly not mad about it. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, those people exist, and uh, you know who you are. There you go. Uh, and what about you, Moritz? What would you say? Yeah, I totally have to piggyback on, on Rodney's opinion here. Mm. Um, hangouts are totally my central point um, uh, on Google+, Plus because it's, it's you know such a great way to interact and to connect with people around the world within no time. It's so easy to use, and you, you know... We were sitting here connected around the world, right? I'm in Germany, you're in the US, and we're hanging out having a conversation. And also, as Rodney said, the, the, the whole interaction on Google Plus is, is such, such a different experience compared to other social networks. Um, you really have, like, you know, in comments, really interesting discussions going on when you did a post or, or you comment on, the, on another post can really start great discussions or even you know, jump from there into a hangout and continue the discussion live face to face. And this is really great, you know, the whole interactive part about Google Plus. Yeah. You know, you know, I would add one other thing too, uh, Matthew. Sure. sure. <clears throat> and it's the kind of thing that you're doing, you know, uh, these shows that you're uh, broadcasting for people to watch and, and putting up on YouTube for those guys that don't know what it's like. You get a taste of it, you know, and see what it's really like, and, and you know, just being people, just being real people, and, yeah. and hang hopefully, out, you know? mostly, and yeah, I think it's gonna, it's gonna grab some attention, you know, uh, and more and more as time goes on. Yeah, and it's you know, it's really great to, uh, to show people that we're not <laughs> scary. Most of us, there are plenty of people that it's the internet. I mean, you get scary people here and there, but for the most part, hangouts. The great thing about a hangout is if you don't like it, you don't like the people, you don't like the vibe, there's an exit button. There's a lot of people that like to rage quit, we call it, when they just kind of just go zip. Yeah. And I find 89, 80 to 90% of the people that rage quit had a crash and they didn't need to quit. But, yeah. 80, but then 80 to 90% of the people in the hangout think that they were mad. So that's <coughs> kind of funny, that dynamic. Uh, it just goes from hanging out and experience. So and you also and have the new ignore, the new ignore um, functionality, right? <laughs> You do. I, I don't know. So that's interesting. The blocking and then the ignore or the, the temp, I should say the temp block, you want to call it. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, if you, again, if you if somebody's bothering you and you're like, I don't want to, like, totally excommunicate this person from my Google Plus life, I can ignore, I can get rid of them in, 
ignore them. I can't see or hear them in this hangout, and then it goes away. But you know, there was an argument about that because people in the beginning were like, "Well, why do I only want to tempt them? Chances are, I don't want to have anything to do with them at all." And, and then those people came around. So, but I haven't used the ignore yet. I've used the block. But have you have you used the ignore marks? Have you? Um, not yet. I mean, I, I I just recently got back to Hangouts because I was busy um, with real life stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I haven't been in a in a hangout yet where someone was really bothering me, so I, I felt needing, you know, ignoring him or temporarily blocking blocking him. I blocked a lot of people um, um, a while ago when we only had the blocking feature. Yeah. Um, but only then when it really was appropriate to really block the person. What about you, Rodney? Do you have do you have experience with having to block people, or have you used the ignore feature yet? With have I, I didn't understand what what feature he was he was referring to. Oh, so now when you when you click on block somebody, if yeah. you can do it, you can do it carefully. Like if you click on the the Ghostbuster signal, the do not smoke symbol, uh, it shows you that you can it shows you can ignore the person, and then if you don't, oh. you really want to block them. There's a little check mark, I think, right? Okay, so, right. Well, that's that's a good feature. I didn't, I wasn't aware of it. Uh, it's new, yeah. They don't sometimes. They, I don't know if they made a public post about that. Did they, Lawrence? Uh, not, not about the ignore. Feature, I yeah, guess. maybe because they don't yeah. really want you to. I've been kind of the last couple of days, uh, kind of been out, totally for yeah. the last two days. It's so. only it's only like a week old, maybe, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's good that they they gave you some versatility there, uh, you know, because blocking somebody's pretty harsh, you know. Uh, and and you know exactly. I typically I've got a circle where uh, I won't say the name of it, <laughs> but it's a holding tank that messed up, and we're, I'm waiting for strike three. You know, so it's like your strike two circle. Sweet. What's that? Douchebag oh. circle. What? Oh. <laughs> uh, actually, um, I will tell you. Tell what. us the name. No, sorry, you don't have it's to tell. It's called ignorance and arrogance. Nice. I know, I know he can add to that circle. Beep. I can't say it on air. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Do you have a lot? Do you have a lot of people in that circle? Like, is there a number? You don't want to tell what the number is. Is it is it greater or less than ten? Can you tell us that? All right, Who's it doesn't really matter. Me? Yeah. That I have blocked? Where don't you have in the ignorance and ag 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 or arrogance circle? You're, I don't know if everybody's experiencing this, but your audio is cutting out on me. My audio is cutting out? Yeah. It's cutting out, it's cutting yeah, out it, sometimes you're, you're cutting out. Oh, uh, strange. How about I didn't now? catch all of what you were asking me. Oh, I said, how many people are, your, are in your arrogance and ignorance? Oh. Is it greater than 10? Like, oh, no. There's only one there. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, man, I won't ask you who that is. Uh, <laughs> what do you think of Hangouts? What's the first thing that comes to mind? And is my audio, let me know if my audio is really bad. I don't know how I would fix it, but... Um, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah. Is there a word or... Yeah. Where's my ball cap? Because my hair is usually sticking straight up. <laughs> <laughs> In the morning. I have that issue. What about you, Martz? What's the first thing that you think of? You think of Hangouts? I said, what's the first thing you think of when you think of Hangouts? Of Hangouts? Yeah, um, what's the first word or thought that comes to your mind? Is there something fun. that comes... Fun? Fun. Are people... Are, do you find that you enjoy people more on Hangouts than you do, say, in the streets of Germany? Or is that a trick um, question? Is that a weird question? Maybe, maybe. Depends on the day. Yeah. What about you, Roddy? Do you find that you're finding more people you're enjoying on Hangouts than maybe on the streets where you yeah, live? Or? Yeah, you know, our streets are not like yours, like, uh, you know, where you guys are from, where they actually have people. Uh, our streets are, you know, you got highways, and I live off of a highway. So, yeah, definitely much more so Hangouts. Yeah. You know, uh, because uh, you got to go somewhere to see people from where I live. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I see I see a lot of people downtown here, but it's it's totally yeah. different to hangouts. Yeah. No. Yeah. Downtown. No. I don't know how you're downtown. Downtown Baton Rouge is a bunch of snobby people, and <laughs> they don't have anything to do with you. And don't don't. I mean, if just you know. 
tapping them on the shoulder and saying something, they'd be shocked. Yeah. You actually did that, you know? Well, uh, I think that, and we in New York, it's a tough up. I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of cool people to meet here, but I, because there are people here from all over the world, but I think that it's, it, it is true that somebody that talks to you in a hangout versus on the street, like if I got a bunch of people from New York in here and we all talk to each other, mm -hmm. we were just like sitting in a cafe, the chances of us all, or bar even, chances of us all talking and interacting on that level or more than just like, oh, hey, or what do you, oh, that, you know, that's a nice hat, or, I mean, very, it's very small, it's not, it doesn't get anywhere. I mean, it's hard to meet people, and a lot of people are kind of cut off, and they have their own life, their own friends, their own world, and, and to just welcome someone into it that they don't have either a friend recommending them or they're at work together, like where they're kind of forced into yeah. spending time together versus that wanting to do it on their own. And I think that Hangouts enable that. So it's a, real, it's a real comfortable and safe way to get to know people, you know, people that are, for people that are, you know, are hesitant, like I was. You know, for so many months, I, I didn't do it. You know, and, and when I once I did, I was like, "Wow, this is cool. I need to do this every night." You know, so I, you know, I, 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 uh, I typically do every evening do a little bit of hanging out. Yeah, we hang out way too many hours overall. I know that now that a year has come, and almost a year, and we, I know that all of us, when we first start hanging out. A lot of us, at least me and Morris, maybe you too, Rodney, we would have 15, 16, 17 crazy amount of hours of hanging out in a row. And uh, we couldn't feel our butt at the end, uh, yeah. and we, like from like 7:30 p.m. to like 6 a.m. 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. To give you something for those hours, Matthew. You know, like <laughs> like flying miles. Right? You think? You think? <laughs> well, they've given me something. They've given me the ability to uh, to feel some pain in my body. What? That's that's a plus. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, it's interesting to see. Uh, who, it's interesting to see now that the old school hangouters are people that have been doing it a while, that have been on Google Plus, versus those that are newer. And then there are people that are in betweeners. Like, they showed up kind of at the beginning, they kind of didn't really do anything. And then months later, they jump back and they started hanging out, and they're like, oh, hey, what's going on? I was like, oh, you just started hanging No, well, I kind of had an account, and I was using it like in month one, and now I'm here in month eight. And they're like, oh, okay. But it's interesting, too, because like someone, there was one guy that I met who was like, uh, oh, you should publicly hang out more, Matthew. I was like, uh, I've done that. I mean, I do sometimes, <laughs> but it's like, it's like, imagine if, I mean, that might be a test case to show our hangout history. Like if somebody had look, could look at our hangout history, at least that was open to the public or limited, and they could see all the hours, and they could see, they, you know, then it's just, I don't know. Do, would, do you think that people would be against that? Would you guys be against that? Something like that to show your history of hangouts and, who you hung out yeah, with? That would like, be kind of cool. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a problem with it. I mean, some, yeah. I don't know. Some people right. have very private hangouts, you know. Uh, yeah. In occasion, I, mean, I can understand. In occasions that I've had private hangouts where I just I need to dis discuss something with somebody, an individual, you know, and have a, a private hangout. Yeah, I could see like one-on-one -on -one hangouts maybe not being shown because if you're hanging out with one person for many months, then people are like, oh my God, you hung out with so and so alone yeah, yeah. for like months, people are like, oh, you guys must be together or something's going on. So I think like, it would be cool to have like like an, an anonymous like statistic of how many hours in total you were hanging out. I mean, not like, you know, with who you were hanging out, but just, you know, the amount of hours yeah. you spent in hangouts. Like yeah. all of it. It would be pretty yeah. amazing. And to show you like a ripple, to show you when you usually hang out the most, what day, uh, what right. time. Yeah, you know, you're like, cool. I think you will be shocked, like, wow, I wasted so much time of my life in a hangout. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you know about it, if you prepare yourself beforehand, because I was, when I had she and David on, I hope they were joking, but they did say when I asked, can you tell us the one person who had the most hours, they looked at me, and I hope they were joking, but if it is me, I mean, I'm like, there was the longest hangout, and I still, I don't know. I know that every week I guarantee a certain amount of hours on air, I hang out uh, with people, but not as much as I'd like just because there's so much to do. I mean, I feel like I was underprepared promoting this show, uh, like, you know. You know, I've got my Cintiq right here, and I work during Hangouts, you know. I can talk and work at the same time. It's great. Yeah, which is pretty cool. I do that, too. And Moritz yeah. probably does. Moritz, I don't understand. Moritz actually does physically get up from his, uh, his home and go to a job during the week, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> and a lot of people are shocked. I mean, is it... I mean, obviously, you might sleep more now, but do you do you have issues function, staying awake sometimes at work? Or? 
Uh, sometimes, usually on Mondays. Mondays. That's <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm staying way up too long on Sundays um, in a hangout. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's working. Catherine was asking me the same question. It was like, how can you live with so less sleep? I, was, I said, well, right. I'm kind of fine for a while with only like five to six hours. But at some point, I'd need my you know a really good long sleep to to get back to to normal. Yeah. And I think we all need to sleep, but I think, and this isn't, I don't know if this, it sounds sexist in my head, it's not meant to be, but I think that, uh, you know, girls want to look, the, we all want to look their best, our best, but, you know, it's harder to cover up, you know, lines and things, you know, when it comes to women and their beauty sleep, right? I'm not trying to be, maybe that sounds wrong, but <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> I see. I'm away from that stuff. <laughs> right past. Yeah. Oh, I love you all. Uh, people that you love on Google Plus that uh, that maybe don't get the attention they deserve. Maybe we were talking about this earlier. Someone like an artist or someone that has only a few followers that the community doesn't know. Maybe a new artist, a new musician, person, a new person doing tech stuff. There's like someone that comes to mind, or a few people that aren't like big in the community yet. Rodney, is there anyone that another caricature artist? Oh, you, or wait, or another artist? Because I know you're like, oh, I don't want competition. <laughs> you're like you're putting me on the spot Moritz I'll get, let Moritz go <clears throat> yeah well on. I think um, I would suggest like um, Dolly Young from mm -hmm. Scotland she's really really uh, a helpful user on Google Plus she does a lot of like um, video tutorials on explanations for um, Chrome extensions for Hangout applications for mm -hmm. Google Plus and how things work to make it easier for new users to to find their way on Google Plus and and what's useful and and how things work and stuff. So this is really she does really a good job with with her videos. Yeah, I agree. Dolly is a great girl. And really, she's really interested and really into what she does. Dolly kind of does Dolly kind of come to your hangouts, Rodney? She's kind of sometimes my uh, downs and like, sometimes yeah. yeah. You know, the first person that came to mind when you said that was a really new Google Pluser and artist. She's a brilliant artist. Um, May Fong Robinson. But I noticed when I looked at the suggested user list that she's on there. Really? Great. Right. Wow. Yeah. And so, she's brand um, new, huh? I think I saw. How did you discover her then? Well, we were friends from DeviantArt. And, you know, DeviantArt is not a place where you make friends. But this lady, like, you know, if anybody that knows May Fong Robinson, she's a sweet, sweet lady. She's an absolutely brilliant uh, digital painter. And uh, I was just amazed by her and her work. And we became friends. And uh, we connected on Facebook. And then uh, she came over. Google Plus, and we connected here. She, you know, just recently she came to Google Plus, but but uh, she she's uh, she's had a good reception, and uh, people cool. love her work and love her. She's she's a sweet lady, as, as well as her husband. Uh, really nice guy. How does it? It's and so, but, okay. So she's on the user list, so she's probably already. But M E M A E. What is it? I think I, yeah, M A Y. I, I think I think she's on. If if she's not on there, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> she's definitely watching right now. <laughs> and she's not on there. She should be on there. And the other one would be you, man. Oh, man. I know how hard you work. Really, you work. You put a lot of time into what you do, and and uh, you put a lot of time into people, man. You know, you made me feel real uh, welcome in the yard, in the, the the hangout headquarters. I didn't know you. Yeah. You know, and uh, you didn't have to do all that. But uh, you did a whole lot for a whole lot of people, and and, and have you know, on a number of occasions, and I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that just because I'm on your show. No, no. <laughs> Disclaimer. You got, you've done some good things, and, and people really like you. you got a great personality, you know, and I think you deserve yeah. to be in there. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet of you. And you know what? At the end of the day, I think Google probably wants to s I mean, my I always thought that Google just wants to see what I can do without their help, so that's what it seems like. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, oh, you'll you'll be in the millionaire club one day, man. Millionaire club. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, but at the end of the day, you know, it's like there's <laughs> been a lot, and that's great. And, and I want to make people feel welcome and enjoy each other. I mean, I know that Moritz. I wish you were there, and you, and I and I know you got to. I missed driving. Listen, driving to Jersey uh, at the New York airport. I would have loved to, but 
I'm sorry yeah. I missed that. But uh, but listen, Lawrence, even though you weren't at New York City Hurl, you were you spent a lot of time on that uh, the hurl video, which is really cool. And it, did you feel? I mean, maybe you weren't personally there, but you got a sense of like. And then you did your South by Southwest, so you got your own right. Big too. I mean, hurls are are always um, a lot of fun, and it, it's a great experience. And every person I I spoke to who had a hurl yet, they they all said the same that it's like you know meeting like lost family members. <laughs> there is no really you know distance between people because they already know each other from hangouts. So there's usually you know you know hugging and and what what not you know from the start. Because you already like on, and, and know each other from hangouts, and yeah. um, but but to to let you know, I'm I'm planning on coming over to New York um, <gasps> next year Sweet. for about two weeks. So I will I will spend two weeks in in, in New York, Connecticut, Washington D.C. So oh, like all in these places, Oklahoma? right? So to meet some people there. Are you gonna take, rent a car? Are you gonna take a train, fly? What are you? Gonna, you gonna uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm I, I haven't um, gone into details yet. But it's something I'm planning on, and I'm saving money for it. So you know it would be cool, and I'll announce it. I know we're on the show, but it'd be cool if a bunch of us could rent some kind of a big van or truck or something, and literally tour the East Coast together. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, mostly there for, for, you know, just having vacation and to explore the city. It's not like, you know, priority. My, my priority is not like hanging out in real life. It's more like having vacation, but. Everyone oh, who's around, I, uh, right, right. But everyone who is around, you know, is invited. You know, something tells me more. That, something tells me that it's about vacation, but you're going to make it more about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it changed. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen for sure. Uh, what about? Okay, so there's cat pictures, dog pictures, animated gifts. I know you're an artist, and so people make a big stink about these things. Like some people love them, some people hate them. Depends on the day. Do you have any strong opinion either way, Rodney, on, on these three things, cats, dogs, and animated GIFs? Um, oh, the animated GIFs and all? Well, I think a lot of them can be silly. Some of them are funny. Some some of it gets a little bit old, you know? Uh, Duncan K. Uh, Blith Blithitz is another artist. He does great. Hilarious, though, and you got to put them up. I put them uh, Occasionally, I'll put one up. Not not very often. But not like Mozart, yeah. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> if I find something that really strikes me as funny, I'll, you know. I'll even have share. Typically, I try to share other people's stuff. I don't. I don't put much stuff up myself. Yeah. What about I'm cats and dogs? Fine. Something I put together, you know. Catterday, cats and dogs. That does that bother you at all? Do you care? Does it make Does it make you like? No, actually, one you? of my most one of my more popular posts was a, a, a an extremely old manipulation I did uh, called animals in it was for a contest called animals in space and it's a cat. Like <laughs> entering the atmosphere, and uh, people got a kick out of it. So, yeah, I did you my. Should we share that on Saturday? I did my Catterday thing. Yeah. Cool. And, what about the only other one I've done is is uh, a mouse or rat reading the book uh, Thousand and One Uses for a Dead Cat. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that one. Yeah, that one rings a bell. Uh, what are you, Marts? Uh, well, yeah, an animated GIFs um, in general, they can be fun if they're done the right way. <laughs> I mean, I, I, sometimes I post animated GIFs as well, but, but not that often. I mean, it's a cool thing that Google Plus is playing them automatically. Um, Something so that others, is, the other guys don't do, yeah. Right. I mean, sometimes you, you just you know want to show a part of a video or whatever, but then, you know, it's probably even, you know, too much to click on a play button and to watch the video. So you want to have, like, some sort of animated scenery from a video playing directly in the stream. Um, not like, the, you know, the Michael Moser pop color neon whatever <laughs> thingies. Um, so in, in some cases, they can be useful if they, you know, use the right way. And about cats and dogs, well, you know, you should know my opinion about cats and cat <laughs> <laughs> Say it anyway for the people that don't. Well, you know, we we you know back in the day we we kind of got you know, s yeah annoyed of all the cat day and cat pictures and stuff. So we you know started the whole boober day uh, movement, <laughs> uh, which got now a bit like you know 
<laughs> overtaken <laughs> with the bacon stuff, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah. Now we have like all the bacon yeah. um, flooding our streams. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of it. sometimes I, I post a cat picture or so on Cat Day if it's really funny, but I, I don't really care about Cat Day or what whatnot. Right, I don't necessarily think that it's like care about it in a sense of like, oh my god, I mean, I miss a cat day. I'm not like, I don't beat myself up. Oh my god, I missed the picture. Yeah, it's totally but it's also not the way that I'm, you know, muting all the posts or, or whatever. So. Right, and there was, Muhammad did make that extension with the filter out cat day. Right. And so I don't know how many people use that to filter stuff out or boobs or whatever. No, at I'm not using day, that. Yeah, at the end of the day, I think it has to do with NSFW, and I think that. You know, I mean, people, that, that's a big argument, right? So people usually say, oh, you know, I'm at work and I can't have boobs coming across my stream and things like that. And people argue, well, you shouldn't look at your stream at work and this and that. Do you have any feeling? I mean, more, it's you're actually at an office. Do you use Google Plus at work at the office and yeah. stream? And, and so do you ever, are you ever embarrassed by what comes across it? Like, do you think people might see it? or? No. I have a wall behind me so nobody really can see it. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Uh, what else? Uh, I mean, if I figure out that if I figure out that some people post, um, you know, embarrassing content or whatnot, which is maybe not safe for work, I put them usually in a circle, which is like you know, low volume, so they're not showing up, and I'm fine with that. That totally yeah. works. What do you think? So that's interesting. That brings up speaking of the volume thing. Are there? I mean, I post a lot, and some people post a lot, and some people post less. What do you do? You guys, are there? Do you have any feelings about people being too quote unquote noisy uh, versus the opposite? I mean, I don't know. If I even like the word noisy on on the internet. Like to say someone posts a lot and call them noisy, you know, and then to say someone post doesn't post at all and call them quiet. I mean, everyone has their own styles. Do you? What do you guys right. think about those two things? Well, you know, they got. There's a few people out there that uh, that just pump things in the stream uh, in massive volume. Uh, I, I guess thinking they're going to get more stuff noticed and more likes or more follows or whatever by doing that. Uh, and I totally miss everything that's going by me. It's going by so fast with with people that do that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, everybody. I mean, my my posting is pretty. It's really pretty erratic. It, it depends on my how my day's going. You know, uh, when I have time, I go in. I start. You know, I, I make a post and I go around. I share some posts. Um, and uh, but I might get busy for four or five hours. You know, and not not be able to post anything. So do you uh, feel? Do you, ever, you know? Do you ever feel? Well, now you're both on the SUL. Do you feel this like need to keep up with a post a day or a couple of posts a day, or is it changed? Or I, that crossed all? my mind that you know if, if there's going to be more people circling me than uh, uh, you know that maybe they maybe they might be expecting a little more and and uh, maybe I should post more and and but not only that uh, there all those those people are opportunities for me and you know. Uh, 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 I'm looking for exposure with my budding business, and and uh, you know certainly uh, make my stuff available to those new people coming in so they can see it. What about you, Mark? Your posting, the noise you um, buy it, the SUL. Yeah, I, I think I mean yeah, some people are quite noisy as you call them, um, but if they are, I'm you know use just the volume side or put them in some sort of circle where I can adjust their um, amount of posts. But I really think that, I, I'm not sure why it is, but so I really feel that I'm missing out on a lot of posts. I think you're not um, yeah. yeah, I don't know why. So I, I have a bunch of people I, I really check every day and see what they post um, and going to their profile directly without, you know, not searching them in the, in the stream. Or even in a circle. Yeah, I feel like if you go to their profile directly, then how can right. you, it's all there, you know, you can't miss right. it. So. And um, I think my amount of posting, I re it, it really depends on the day. Um, I think in, in general I have like 10 to 15 pro posts per day mm -hmm. around that. Um, on Friday I post a lot, of, lot more in a short amount, amount of time because I usually um, have a, you know, a website which, which posts some stuff, funny stuff on Fridays and I'm cool. usually checking it while, I, while I'm at work and then um, 
I, I get the funny, the funny, funny stuff out of it, which I, I think it's funny and, and worth to post on, on Google Plus. And then I, you know, push it out like within an hour, like several, six. Yeah, hours. you just you you get into a zone, and I think you know Ronnie was talking about pumping stuff, but I think right. it's like there are times where you you know you get a lot of ideas. And with me, I have a lot of ideas all the time, so I'll get an idea, I'll start a post here, I'll start a post there, and then I'll try to finish one. And sometimes I'll like I I've been working on a couple of posts here and there with other stuff going on. And I'll hit share, and I'll hit share, and so they'll all pop up. It's like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you have like, like some peaks during the week, but I think my, my posting in, in general is, is quite normal. I would say that I'm yeah. too noisy. Yeah, I think, though, that posting uh, a, a considerable amount of content is, is uh, showing, you know, in some ways showing appreciation for those people that are following you and, and like yeah. you know, the content that you you're providing. Can I ask Mortz the question about that? Yeah, yeah we yeah. just talked about adjusting the uh, volume. You could adjust the volume on the screen or in circles. circles, yeah. I first saw right. that with uh, uh, Elaine uh, Lindsay. She showed me. And I said, well, is this just in Canada or something? Because mine doesn't do that. I don't have that on Is there... Is it something that happens? No, you have to go. You have to go on a on a on a circle. Uh -huh. Yeah, specifically. Like on the on the new on the new layout, it's like on top, right next to the home icon. You have like the circle, then you can click on more. So you only display one specific circle as a stream, and then you have on top the volume slider where you can adjust the volume. But there's for no this volume. Specific Mine doesn't have that. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm no, you have to actually go to you went. You have to actually go to an actual circle view. Right. Not a, I am. Yeah. I, I, you are. Yeah, I know how it. Uh, let me screen share real quick. Which, for some reason, so then you have like you know you have this this gray bar on top, right? Yeah. Well, I have that, but I have no slider on the right when I click on a circle. For some reason, you're not your picture is not focusing. You want me to show you uh, what mine looks like? No. Oh, okay, there's focus. All right. No. So yeah, you can. But so for instance, so oh. I don't have a. What do you? Is that an extension? Show all? I don't have that. Wait. Hold on. No, no, no. This is just the circle. Circle names I, I have. Oh, what are your circle names? Is show all? Yeah, yeah. But I thought we so only had two. How do you, have, you see that? How do you have three circles? I, I thought we no, 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 Rodney. Oh. You, that's the wrong menu. Click on the home. Click on the home, on home. icon. Yeah, right, and then you have this all, and then friends, family, whatever, on top. Right next, no, no, no. No. Click no. on home again. Click and on friends or family. Yeah, there, there are all your circles. Oh, and then select like one of these yeah. circles. Click one of those. Okay. So it only displays the circle, and then you can adjust the volume. Great. There's oh, the volume. I knew there. I knew there was a way uh, that I didn't understand. I think we just taught a lot of people how to use that. Yeah. Most yeah. people yeah. Well, that's there. a really valuable tool. I there's there's great. only one one thing confusing when you have like. Um, some people in multiple circles. I think it's it's a bit confusing. Um, a lot of people it were confuses having the issues. algorithm, or no, um, because they said you know I I muted this person, but it's still showing up. And then you know it <laughs> was hard to figure out figuring it out. And then we figured out that the person was also in another circle where the volume was still up. So um, it always you know uses the volume, the highest volume for user from what I've understood so far. So if you have like a user in multiple circles and you want to make sure that posts from a specific user are not showing up, you have to make sure that this I do. I do find it, can I just make a point out, I do find it interesting that you would have someone in many circles and want to mute their posts. <laughs> yeah. just say, I'm just saying, it's weird. Yeah. Put them in one circle, what? Anyway. You're talking uh, to me right. in my circle? You're referring to my circles? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> No, no, we weren't. We just, yeah, yeah. But what? What are you saying? What you're talking about? Uh, what about? So, do you guys still? You talked a little bit about using Facebook a little bit. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, others. Do you use them? You still use them? Less, more, the same? You know, that's that's interesting. You bring that up. I I've hit my limit on on Facebook as far as friends. I've, I've hit my five thousand limit. So I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure out what to do because you know I've un I've I've uh, unfriended, you know, like the dead accounts, and, and I don't know <laughs> how else to do it. They don't have, see, Facebook doesn't have any kind of uh, statistics where you can go in and say, well, 
you know, these people are, aren't active or whatever, and, and, and eliminate them. Because there's no doubt, out of the 5,000, that probably at least at least 25% of them are totally inactive. Yeah. You know? But I don't know who they are, you know. But then again, you know, there's another aspect to Facebook, and, and that's the, the fan page I have. Uh, I started that there uh, a couple of years ago, and it crawled along and didn't do anything until I joined Google Plus, and it skyrocketed, it took off, you know. And and it, you can see by looking at, at that page that there's only about 10% of uh, the likes on that page that are from Facebook, you know, that are, are friends on Facebook. So it's interesting, you know. Most of them came from here. Yeah, that's yeah. I did, and in fact, I took. But you know that Facebook in general is is valuable to me. You know, I've made a lot of friends there. I know a lot of people there. I've made some some good, uh, you know, uh, close relationships, and and you know, I've got a whole lot of people that that like what I do, and and I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate every person that circled me. You know, I mean, yeah. Um, you know, uh, and what I'm about the other ones? Twitter, right Pinterest. Is Pinterest is pretty important to you as a as an artist, right? What's that? Is Pinterest pretty pretty important to you as Pinterest, an artist? Yeah, Pinterest. Uh, somebody told me, right, you need to get on Pinterest. You do good on Pinterest, and uh, I did, and and yeah, it's it's, it's taken off it's taken off pretty fast, considering that I don't really work it. I don't do anything with it, you know. Right. Um, I think I think the thing too is is the idea that. You're posting just that picture. It's that it's that celebrity, and people recognize those celebrities. They're like, "Oh, that's cool. Look at that!" And it's easy to hit like and repin and comment on Pinterest. Like so, just like it's all in front of you. It's not like one co one post at a time or a few. It's like a bunch, and it's easy to go through and hit like on stuff. And I think that that's part yeah. of it, you know. You know, if I, had I spread those out, I probably would have got a lot more people following. <laughs> I uploaded everything I had in one day. You yeah. Know? Well, it's cool. You're doing right. And so you're you're saying you still use them kind of the same. I mean, you're heavy on Plus, but you're still Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, or LinkedIn, maybe, or no, not really. Twitter Twitter is valuable for me. Yeah. Twitter has been valuable for me. I have uh, made some bu business contacts through Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. You know, I've got a lot of connections through LinkedIn, uh, but you know, I haven't really, I haven't made any business connections. The majority of my business connections, without a doubt, came from have come from Google Plus. Ninety percent of my commissions are coming directly through Google Plus. So, you know, I this is that. this is the home base for my business. You know, uh, I would totally, I would totally agree that I think I don't know how well LinkedIn works. I hear rumors people get jobs and stuff, but I feel like from what I've seen, from hanging out people that are active here. That most people with the most opportunities of work and jobs. I know, like Samantha Villanova, who used to hang out all the time, now is a community manager, and uh, I think, or some social media in France. I know that Moritz actually has hurled with Samantha, and so it's amazing, right? Just that Samantha went from someone that would wake up with us and comb her hair and get herself ready and be here and doing it, and now like I don't even know if she's hung out. Since she's got her new job and her move, yeah, she's update. super busy and the new job. Yeah. But so, so leading into that, what about you with these, with the, the social media, Morris? The other, the other. Um, well, I still have my Facebook account for you know several reasons because there are still a lot of websites and products which requires you to have a Facebook account to log in or a Twitter Twitter account. That um, might change. Should change. Right. Um, but we don't know when. So um, and s still, a lot of my friends, real life friends, are on Facebook, and they still, you know, haven't created a Google Plus account yet. Um, I don't know. It's a German thing. You know, they don't. <laughs> they're not really interested in Google Plus yet. They think, you know, it's still in beta or whatnot. But they're not alone. Let's be honest. Like, let's. Right, right. And I think that's the argument. Like, I can't fault someone for saying Google Plus is. I don't want to say dead, but I can't fault someone for saying Google Plus is not mainstream. And I no, can't it's what you make out of it. It's totally yeah. what you make personally yeah. out of it, you know. Yeah, and it can't fault someone that says it's awesome. It depends on what you do with it. But right. I mean, it's true that I think that the, a fair statement to say is that almost everyone's quote unquote people that they knew beforehand, their real life friends and their real life family that they've interacted with on Facebook, 
or have not yet made that move. Majority of them is, is fair to say. Right. So I'm using Facebook every now and then, and I added a couple of people from Google Plus on Facebook as well. Um, but you know, uh, uh, sometimes I'm, 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 you know, just of curio out of cur curiosity, um, I'm doing you know a bit of testing. Like I post something on Google Plus, and I get like a lot of comments and reshares and plus ones on it. Post the same stuff on Facebook, and nothing happens there. So it's right. you know. I would say, you know, uh, Facebook is more like a ghost town than, you know, Google+. Plus. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, to, ca to counter that a little bit, the interesting thing that I did is is that when I was kind of, like, there, I, I have love-hate with all this stuff, and so I decided to make, when Google, Facebook came out with this new interest, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make an interest of Google+, Plus people, and then I got all these people to friend each other on Facebook through this Google+, Plus subscription list on Facebook, and it's all the content of Google+, Plusers on Facebook. And so now there's a lot more interaction between the Google Plusers stuff on Facebook, which I thought was interesting, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah and, and to, to, to Twitter, um, I mean, I, I have a Twitter account. Uh, I still wonder why people are following me on Twitter because I'm not really posting stuff there. Um, if it's not like, you know, I, I did something on cloud or whatever and it posts on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, um, I, I recently got more more again into Twitter. Twitter, yeah. Well, to Pinterest, I'm I'm not really got into Pinterest yet. I, I have an account. I looked around a bit, but I still don't really get the point of Pinterest, except of just searching for pictures. Yeah. But for that, I just use Google Search. It's much faster for me. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, sometimes you get inspired by just browsing through Pinterest. That's true, but. I don't have the time to just spend a whole lot, whole day on on Pinterest to to get inspired. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, uh, talking about uh, Twitter, I said that that Twitter has been real good for business, but but really in one one specific way, um, it has made my blog grow. Um, I look at my statistics and and how much traffic. Uh, tweets are driving, and I can literally go. I've got one of those little widgets with a globe where it, you know, it lights up when people hit it uh, real time, and I can make a post and go look at that globe, and it just start lighting up because it automatically. I got it so you know it automatically tweets the post. Uh, so people visit people people from Twitter click those links and visit those. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting thing. You know the connection. Of you know, you connect your Twitter and your Facebook to everything, and so, and even YouTube, I was doing that, and I realized, oh my God, I connected all my YouTubes, and every single time I do anything on YouTube, it was popping up the same video, like if I liked and favorited and shared and uploaded, the same video kept posting up, that's why, like, someone like Eddie Rockmore, Johnny Rockmore put up, like, a, a post of Rappaport doing meme all on Facebook, I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize, because I don't, you don't see, you're used to posting on Facebook one at a time, but when you connect all these other sites to post for you, you don't necessarily see it all, and so it all goes out on the stream. And you're like, "Oh, I'm right. doing all this stuff I didn't mean to do." So, but so that uh, you know, when I connect Pinterest to Twitter and Facebook, you know, the Twitter does be kind of like, "Oh, you know, Matthew liked the YouTube video, or Matthew liked the Pinterest, or Matt, you know," and and it, it takes away that personal part of, of Twitter, you know, and I, and I feel bad about that, so I have to change that. Work <clears> on that, but but Twitter is kind of, you know, it. I don't know. They welcome it. So I mean, a lot of people. There's it becomes less dangerous too, though. You yeah. know, there's a lot of uh, pornography wow. running rampant on on Twitter, and, and uh, it's hackville, man. You better have a good password. You know? uh, yeah, the hacking is weird. Uh, and so, last thing here. So, what is, is there something that really that we haven't talked about that has blown you away on Google Plus? Something that you've seen, whether it's an event or or just a moment for yourself, or or stuff that's happened that you just Kind of just puts it all in perspective, or you just you just really made a difference for you in, in how you see Google Plus. That comes to mind, you, the hurling or or yeah, hangouts or definitely definitely. Uh, well, hurling was phenomenal, man. I, I encourage anybody that has an opportunity to do a hangout in real life to go for it. You know, save up the money you got to and go for it. It's well worth it. It's it's just you can't imagine. Uh, I'll I'll never ever forget that experience. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to go too long without doing it again. You know. So. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> something we should do multiple times a year if we can. Yeah, absolutely, sure. absolutely. But you New Yorkers need to come down south. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd, I just, I just gotta get the money together. I'm working on it. Yeah. More, it's yeah. you're like hurling all the way. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with hurling. Um, and I think Johnny Rockmer and I, we were talking about that while we were in Austin. We were just joking and saying, you know, we should just, you know, charter a big, you know, cruise ship or whatever, get all on there, and having a big, big party for like two weeks cruising the sea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be great to all. I, we were joking about that too, just a yacht and just all of us just going right. everywhere and, and hurling as long as we can. Look, there's so many things we could do, interesting things we could do together. You know, in you know, I know the real world was popular and all that, but if we document it, we make videos, we take pictures, it's on air, and at the same time, in a sense, we are promoting Google and Google Plus, and so there is a lot to that, uh, a lot that can be done, a lot of opportunity. You know, I had talked about having buildings in cities that were dedicated to Google Plus users to come and use it and create content, create shows, just that idea. Because they said, at Google, they say dream big. So I really thought, wouldn't it be great if every Google Plus uh, uh, office had another building specifically for people that are Google Plus users to come and, and, and use studios and create shows and maybe make positions and, and you know, like, you know, be someone that makes shows and helps other people make shows and have a studio and have engineers and editors and things, people that work on different shows and, and then also to have people go out and hurl in cities and have events, you know, have uh, restaurants and use, ski they can use all their products, Gamer and YouTube and Google Plus and, and anything that hasn't come out yet. There's so many opportunities for them to do something on a bigger scale that would get such attention because people would see people all over the place. Instead of seeing, most people aren't necessarily on the internet or they don't think about Google Plus, they think, oh, what's Google Plus? But can you imagine if you're sitting in a restaurant and all of a sudden a bunch of people come in and they're from Google Plus. We did that at Rebecca Pearl's concert. We had the first musician, Devin Rush. We were like, oh, you know, she's talking about her Facebook. We're like, oh, boo, Google Plus, you know, we could be on a hangout. And she's like, what's a hangout? And like, she starts talking to us and you know, that kind of thing. You know, I, I saw a street musician on the street in New York, and I said, hey, you should really get on a hangout. Because, you know, he's playing his music, and people are going by him like he doesn't exist, but on a hangout. And that's what's interesting, right? Some, I mean, street musician might not exist, but then in, on Google+, Plus, that same person is going to get all his attention, possibly. So it's pretty, all the dynamics and the way we think of things and, you know, what we find interesting. It depends on where we are and what we're doing. Uh, there's so many opportunities to do such, such amazing stuff, so... Yeah. You know, my mind doesn't shut off. Go ahead, Rod. I'm sorry. Google Plus is still very young, you know, and uh, no doubt they're still developing a lot of, of stuff on the ground level. And, and they're, you know, the rate they're growing is probably fast enough for them right now to keep up with. And I think, though, that... Right. And uh, if you kind of postpone a little bit, let it take its time, maybe it's a little bit easier to deal with. So, you know, who knows? Uh, yeah, I think they're holding back because it's still, you know, some sort of project, so it's, it's right. still looking right. like it's been in development. Right. But actually, every social network is undergoing a development oh, yeah. Yeah. all the time. So. Well, if you're not, and, and, and you know, pretty much goes for any business, if you're not changing with the times, right. you're not going to make it. Welcome back. Hopefully, uh, I didn't mean I froze and whatever. I hope that whatever you, the last thing you were saying about 
just in case. I don't know if it went off air during that. But. Um, the last thing I was saying was uh, that this when, thing, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think that when, when Google Plus reaches the plateau that Facebook did, you know, with the with the billion users, uh, I think they'll, they'll do something that Facebook hasn't. I think they'll continue to develop and maybe do some of those things you're talking about, you know, and to continue to grow. Uh, I, I think they have that kind of foresight, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but I think they're probably growing at a rate that's um, plenty enough right now for them to handle. Mm. Yeah, I agree. We'll see what happens. I mean, I think part of it too was that they were coming out with so much stuff so fast that it seemed like that that was the track they were taking, and for them to continue on that track, spending all this time and money and, and energy and resources into these things to really make them really to show them what they are and you know just the ability that we that we've had. That we put on our own concert, you know, in New York, but our own concert. We, you know, Bruce Garber did Heather and Ryan, and then we had Jamie Richard did the Daria part, and you know, just the idea that we can have this thrill and include Google Plus on air. You know, this is back in February before people even knew on air existed, for the most part. You know, I there are people that are coming to Google Plus now because of on air. They're like, oh my god, you know, they and they think, you know, a year in, they're like, this is still brand new. Where we think, yeah, it's still brand new, and but to us, it's already a year. You know, and I think thinking long term thinking what what can come is pretty amazing. Uh, even improving all this stuff, you know, so many ideas thrown around at, at the team and uh, who knows what's going on in those Google offices right now. It's so secretive, you know? They're having Froyo, yeah, that's what's going on. Some cool stuff. They're uh, having Froyo and they're playing ping pong. It's <laughs> That's what they're doing. Yeah. Sad. They're not working. I'm just kidding. Oh wait, I'm sorry. David Bennett is probably typing away, but everyone else is like me calling. And she is teaching a class, karate or something, karate, and uh, and drinking soda. But uh, no, I can't thank you guys enough. It was awesome. I've taken a lot of time. Hopefully, you guys, we can do a quick 20, 30 minutes. If not, I understand. Uh, get like more people into the conversation. I like. You know, that's a big thing, too, is that on air, a lot of people do on air, and they have 10 people in their hangout, and sometimes they interact with all 10 people, or they have an open, people jump in, they jump out like a concert, I don't know, Daria does that, a lot of people do that, and some people like me, they do the one-on-one, -on -one, but I think, you know, they do the, the handful of people, and it's just them, and some people include the audience more, and then I've seen people have 10 people in here, and then just have one person they want to talk to, and everybody else is kind of like watching, and they're just quiet, and I... It might, it's my belief that if you're in the Hangout, you should be, it's, unless you're staged, you're not on yet, but if you're in there, you know, and you're part of it, you're, you're people can see you, you should be able to be involved. If there's a song, yeah, you're going to be quiet during that or dancing or whatever, but I feel like the point of people being in the Hangout is for them to be involved. So yeah. I can understand, so I think that that, what do you guys, do you have any opinion on that, or have you done, more yeah. you've done some on air, or have you been yeah, involved? I agree. And, uh, and I will gladly be around <clears throat> to participate in that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think um, in, in Hangout on Air, um, you should only like um, invite those people you really want to interact with, or which are like valuable for the for the actual topic you want to talk about. Um, but it depends on the topic. If you do some, you know, like concerts, like Daria did it, or like um, we did the Hangout Marathon for the Cure with right. Tiffany, um, which was like you know just a some sort of public hangout on air where everybody was invited to jump in um, just, you know, for the fact streaming this hangout to the public as well. Um, but if you have, like, you know, some, some sort of interview situation or discussion, then you really want to, like, pick your, your um, guests in the hangout on air. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you do that as well, that after you interviewed or after your um, hangout conversations, you, you kind of invite more people for, like, an after show yeah, um, what I plan to do was, soon. Right, which will be you know, now then you know open to to a wider audience to to talk about a bit more, and and have it um, a post discussion to the to the conversation. Yeah, that and too, and also fine. and also kind of like a hangout. So like you know at the end of this, like I was toying with the with the format. So I was toying with it, thinking should these people come in and be about the guests, but you know I can't. I think that that didn't work as well. I think what works is. Let's do a regular hangout. If people have questions, they're going to ask them. If they want to bring up topics, it's going to happen. That's more organic than trying to force people. Because I've had, at the beginning, I would be like, all right, who has a question? We all just kind of quiet. You know, and if I wasn't talking, quiet. 
So it was, right. it was better to do to do a hangout and just kind of show people us hanging out together. And then sometimes the guests would go, and sometimes they would stay. A lot of times the guests would leave, and then we'd just still do three more hours with no guests. We'd just be hanging out, you know, yeah. whatever people want. And then by usually hour 80, I'd be like, uh, yes. I gotta, I'm sleeping. I gotta. Yeah, I figured that out as well. When I was doing or or about to do this, um, you know, help desk hangouts, like user generated hangout help desk hangouts, not the official Google ones. Um, I started with you know using regular hangouts and it was quite okay. But I was like, you know, I want to do it on air, so people can actually watch and ask also questions and the comments and stuff. But the hangouts on air were less successful than the regular hangouts because people are too shy to join a hangout on air. Because then you know they're yeah. on you know yeah. some sort of public everybody can watch and watch if they might pro probably ask a stu stupid question or whatever everybody would be able to see it and it will be recorded on YouTube afterwards and people could make fun of it or whatever. So I think you know in some situations it's better to to keep it with a regular hangout instead of going on air. And that Maybe is interesting. Like that is interesting. I remember the very first days of hangouts and I used to and I'll do do this now if I can not as much but mm -hmm. I'll just. Do a hangout on air, and people come in, and we're just hanging out, and people are watching us. And I really don't, to me, well, actor, director, writer, I don't care, but a lot of people. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that you you've been you've been successful at that at pulling that off. Uh, whereas I now, of course, I don't know everybody that's doing it, but uh, the ones that I know of, um, they're they're like that. They're kind of empty, you know. Uh, they're kind of struggling with, with getting people. To get to come in there, but uh, I think you've been pretty successful. You get you, you get a good group of people through usually, but it's been it has been tougher as more and more people have on air, more and more now that actually everybody has 100% has it now, so it's harder to get people. Yeah. I had a regular group yeah. of people that would watch for the guests and everything. I had a lot of people that used to watch and they'd always come in before on air existed when I was live streaming because no one else was really besides Cam with the <laughs> hangout party and the longest hangout people weren't really doing shows until. On air came around and they're like, oh, all right, I'm going to do a show. You know, they were, some were doing it off the plus, but I yeah, think that was part of the. How I feel about just giving, just just giving out, you know, uh, to to just anybody. You know. Yeah, no, but so we did. So I did try that. I tried to make it so before. Now you really with hangouts on air, you can only invite uh, circles, extended circles, and public won't let you, but. I, when I was live streaming, it had the built. It was before on air. I could invite public, so I would do. I tried doing my friends, and I tried doing not public, but pretty extended circles. And then the problem is, people would come in, they would come out, they'd come in and say, "Oh, what's going on? What's this about?" And then they would drop out, and after I explained to them, we'd be recording all that, so you know, we'd be live. So there'd be a give and take, and then you know, there'd be people like if someone was singing, people would be typing and 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 talking and. And, and interrupting, and so there's a lot of that going on. So after a while, you start to think like, okay, I want to invite people that are related and that are going to be, you know, respectful to a point, you know. And some people weren't, some people weren't. You know, it's simply like the hurl. It's like everyone is cool, but it's like you think everyone's cool, and then some people are more respectful than others, and you know, some people, because again, you're seeing them sitting in a box. They're focused on you talking. You're not seeing them in the real world. You're not seeing them walking around and see how they interact with people and situations. But then at a hurl, you really get to see from them showing up to them throwing their stuff down to, to how they handle. You know, it's funny. And I talked to people. I said, you know what? I'm kind of scared. I don't, I'm not scared. Maybe it's the wrong word, but I'm not sure. We're going to go out to dinner. People are going to be, are people going to be shady about it? Or, you know, you think, oh, everyone's going to dinner. Everyone's going to pay for their, their bill. Everyone's going to pay what they want. But it's a lot of trust because you go out and a lot of these people you know or you don't know, and a lot of times it worked out. But, you know, it, it's amazing. You know, there are a lot of people out there that, that are considered respectful in this community, and they weren't necessarily respectful at the hurl. Uh, and I was very, that was very, that blew me away. And, you know, it's like you get to really know who people are. And sure, people have different amounts of money and this and that. But, you know, for the most part, you know, again, if I was a millionaire, if I had, even if I had a regular a job that paid me a lot of money, I'd be happy to spend money on people, and I did spend money on people uh, that I didn't, couldn't afford to, and it was what it is. But I think that that, that aspect of uh, etiquette and being respectful, whether it's in a hangout or, or in real life, you know, is an interesting one that we see. In the, in the, it's like a psychological experiment or behavior experiment about how people interact with elements and each other, and, you know, how people get mad when you interrupt them, and how people don't get mad, and, 
how people joke about it. You know, you can't tell if someone's joking or they're serious, you know, and, and when they're being both and if they're being sarcastic and when people's feelings get hurt. There's so many elements that, to this Google+, Plus, you know, that make it interesting and can be exciting and the opposite and dramatic and, and, and you know, it's it's been a wild ride in a year, you know, and we see that uh, you got the Moritz has to be right back on. I think that's his eyes, but I remember Eric Rice putting that up. Uh, I don't know if he who did it first, but I can't thank you guys enough. If you have anything else you want to say, Rodney, let's plug RodneyPike dot com. And uh, uh, yeah, RodneyPike dot com. And uh, every all kind of links from there. They're, they're there. Just look at the links page. Cool. And Moritz, of course, you can. Moritz has the lower thirds app. And uh, he'll talk about that more, I'm sure. When you get into that, I'll, I'll put it up. And he does the Hangout volume, which is interesting. Which These are all, you know, it's interesting that the Hangout apps are all things that people kind of want Google to develop. But Google kind of wants Hangout developers, uh, people to develop because they're busy enough. So we'll see how that, that all changes. You know, like, for instance, Hangout Canopy and my Hangouts are useful, but uh, Google has developed where you can see more and more Hangouts uh, from the Hangout page and things like that. So, well, who knows? Will Google develop these apps? Find out. We'll see. But uh, Rodney Pike, thanks for being my guest. Uh, it was a great show. Uh, my pleasure. And we'll do Conversations Plus. If you want to invite to Conversations Plus, hang out afterwards with us on air. Mm -hmm. uh, let me know. Plus, mention me or talk or any way possible if you're on YouTube. If you watch this on YouTube, great, awesome. If you watch it live, very cool. Uh, next week, hopefully, I'll have Matt Gibson. He's a guitar player. Uh, Eric Rice, Kent Meadows. I'm planning a live show in July with a band uh, of a friend of mine, which should be a lot of fun at, at, a, at, a, at their place, I think. And uh, hopefully, we'll get to Hurl in uh, New York City in August. And there are Hurls happening all over the world. Hurl.h.i.r.l. I know it's confusing. Or there are other Hurl pages. You want to check those out, too. And uh, so thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Hangoutconversations.com and on youtube.com backslash hangoutconversations. Uh, Moritz, you're back. Do you want to plug any websites? Lower thirds or anything? Uh, any pictures? No. Not no. at the moment. Not no. at the moment. You'll, you'll, you'll uh, restrain. Cool. Uh, so cool. June, uh, go comment. Go be interactive. Check out you want to check out the Get Started backslash follow, access the usual list and see people that might be interesting. There are more and more people. Again, Moritz, Told off, Roddy Pike. There's also Larry Fournier. I'm saying that wrong. Amanda Blaine, Dari Musk, Tara Nomi was on it, and Monica uh, was on it. I still think they're both cool people to circle. You know, again, Heather Fair, Ryan Van Sickle, uh, those are musicians, John Levy, Levy, Rebecca Pearl. Uh, and also artists. There's a lot of artists I mentioned besides Rodney Pike. There's you know, there's Tim Clary and there's Aaron Wood. Well, I'd be careful about circling Aaron Wood, but uh, uh, <laughs> there's also, there's also um, uh, plenty of people to circle. Uh, tell me out here. Christopher Lira and his daughter Amanda Lira are artists as well. Uh, so many posts on. So many people to check out. You know, that's great. You can check out hashtags, art, and music. You can find a lot of people. So. Good night from New York, from Germany, from Louisiana. This was Hangout Conversations with Ronnie Pike. Air up for Moritz Toldorov. Have a pleasant tomorrow. And uh, do your own on air. Check it out. If you have any questions, maybe we'll help you out. No, we will. Just kidding. Bye. <laughs>